Assalamu alaikum. I am Dr. Sayyid Ali Madan Azmi. Welcome to my channel. In this lecture, we will learn some basic terminologies about synergical coordinates and then we will learn how we can evaluate Kepler integral in synergical coordinates. Synergical coordinates represents a point P in space by the order triples R, theta, and Z, in which R and theta are polar coordinates for vertical projection of P on the xy plane, and Z is the rectangular vertical coordinate. What is meant by this statement? Synergical coordinate is the extension of polar coordinates r and theta in two-dimensional plane. In two-dimensional plane, if we transform our coordinate axis into polar coordinates r and theta, and then if we extend our two-dimensional system into three-dimensional system by adding a vertical axis z, then we can also shift the point p from two dimension space from here whose coordinates are r and theta to the point along vertical direction whose coordinates can be taken as r theta and z so synodical coordinates are the extension of polar coordinates in three dimension space now some equation relating rectangular coordinates and synodical coordinates are x is equal to r cos theta y is equal to r sin theta if you consider only these two equations, x is equal to r cos theta, y is equal to r sin theta, you can see the, these are also the transformation equations for the polar coordinates in two dimension. And for the third axis, we will take z equal to z. r square is equal to x square plus y square, and theta is equal to, and tan theta is equal to y over x. And from here, we can also calculate theta is equal to tan inverse of y over x. When we are performing triple integrals, and when we are calculating triple integrals in cylindrical coordinates, we will always take our small differential volume element as dz r dr d theta. Now, here, if you eliminate dz, then you will get r dr d theta, again, which is a transformation of Cartesian coordinate system into polar coordinate system in two dimension. So here, addition of z will give us cylindrical coordinates, a vertical axis. Now we will learn this triple integral in cylindrical coordinates from Thomas Calculus book, 12th edition, exercise 15.7, question number two. In cylindrical coordinates, the order of variable is always fixed. Means, in cylindrical coordinates, our most inner variable is always z, our center variable is always r, and our most outer variable is always theta. So we will start the process of integration with respect to z first, and then with respect to r, and then with respect to theta. And this hierarchy will be followed throughout all the questions related to cylindrical coordinates. Now the limits of z are r square, r square over 3 to 18 minus r square square root, limits of r are 0 to 3, and limits of theta are 0 to 2 pi. So first of all, we will perform the integration with respect to z. Limits of z are r squared over 3 to 18 minus r squared square root. Integration of dz becomes z for the given limits. In the next step, we will apply fundamental theorem of calculus, upper limit minus lower limit. Now, rewriting these values, we can have 18 minus r squared is to power 1 by 2. And we can multiply this r with the inner terms. So we have 18 minus r squared is for 1 by 2 into r minus r squared into r will be r cube over 3. Now, in the next step, we will perform the integration with respect to r. In order to perform integration in the first term, means 18 minus r squared is for 1 by 2 into r, we have to know this formula. This formula says if in the process of integration, you have a function with some power whose derivative is available as a multiplier, then we will perform the integration of function as f of x is power n plus one over n plus one means we will add one in the power of the function and divide with the same number. Now, you can see if we have to apply this formula on the first term, the derivative of term inside the bracket is zero minus two r with respect to r. So there is a deficiency of minus two here, we can eliminate this deficiency by multiplying and divide with minus two. So in the next step, we have multiplied and divide with minus two. Now we can apply 
this formula on the first term and the integration of second term can be done with the help of simple power rule. In the next step, we have separated the integral on each term so that integration can be performed on each term. Now you can clearly see we can apply this formula on the first term. Applying the integration, we have minus 1 over 2 remain as it is. 18 minus r squared is to power 1 by 2 plus 1 divided by 1 plus 2 plus 1 for the given limit 0 to 3. Minus integration of r cube is r raised to power 4 over 4. We can multiply 4 with 3, so we get r raised to power 4 over 12 for the given limit 0 to 3. Making the simplifications, 1 by 2 plus 1 is 3 by 2. This 2 and this 2 will, can be cancelled out. So we have minus 1 over 3, 18 minus r squared raised to power 3 by 2, limit from 0 to 3. r raised to power 4 over 12, limit from 0 to 3. In the next step, we have applied the limits, upper limit minus lower limit in each term. For upper limit, we have replaced r with 3. And for lower limit, we have replaced r with 0. Similarly, in the second term, we have replaced r with 3. So we have 3 raised to power 4. And for lower limit, we have replaced r with 0. So upper limit minus lower limit, we have applied on each term. So we have minus 1 by 3, t squared raised to power 3 by 2 from the first term. 18 minus 9 is 18 minus 3 square, 3 square is 9. So 18 minus 9 is can be written as 3 square. 3 square is to power 3 by 2. So this 2 and this 2 can be cancelled out. Similarly, 18 can be written as 2 multiplied by 9 raised to power 3 by 2 minus 3 raised to power 4 is 81 over 12. In the next step, we'll perform the simplification. Here in the bracket, 2 multiplied by 9 raised to power 3 by 2 can be simplified as when we apply the square root on each term, we have square root, square root of 9 as 3 and square root of, and 2 square root is square root of 2. Now taking the cube, 3 cube is 27 and square root of 2 cube means we can multiply square root of 2 3 times. So square root of 2 multiplied by square root of 2 multiplied by square root of 2. Now square root of 2 and square root of 2 will give you 2 and this square root of 2 remain as it is. So the simplification of this whole term is 27 multiplied by 2 square root of 2. I have intention on multiplied square uh, uh, 2 with 27 because in the next step we can take this common. So 20 3 raised to power 3 is 27 minus 27 multiplied by 2 square root of 2 from here simplification and in the second term we have after simplification 27 over 4. Again making the simplification we have we can take 27 as common in all the three terms from here from here and from here. When we take 27 common we have minus 1 by 3 minus minus plus 2 square root of 3 over 3. And when we take 27 common, we have minus 1 over 4 from here. In the next step, making the simplification, you can take 12 as LCM. And then after simplification, you have 8 into square root of 2 minus 7 over 4. And this 27 and 12 can be cancelled out with 3. So we have 8 square root of 2 minus 7 over 4 into 9. And the integration of d theta from the limit 0 to pi can be taken as theta for the limit 0 to 2 pi. By applying fundamental theorem of calculus, we have 2 pi minus 0. So 2 pi from this 2 pi, this 2 and 4 can be cancelled out. So we have our answer as 9 pi into 8 square root of 2 minus 7 over 2. I hope you understand this question. Please like, subscribe and share this content with your fellows. Allah Hafiz.